Dan. Welcome to the Yang Gang Roundtable, a special Thursday edition. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jeremy, my co-producer, is not here today because he it's Thursday. So uh, it's just me. And I've been, I've been trying to get the cameras to work, but I do just have the audio working for the live stream. So hello if you're watching on the live stream. Um, and for the audio-only listeners, nothing has changed. So hello. Welcome to the Yang Gang Roundtable. It's Thursday, 2.39, June 4th. Um, Faye has invited a guest today. Faye, would you uh, like to introduce yourself and, and your guest, please? Hello, I'm Faye, and my guest today is John. Uh, he has been working security detail of some news crews in Portland, Oregon, um, but he is a man of many traits, uh, and I'm sure he can help provide some of his uh, different things he does and his insights on his adventures recently in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Faye. Uh, John, are you with us? Yeah, I just heard some creepy guys say, now recording. Was that the NSA? <laughs> that was absolutely the NSA. Thank you for catching it, letting us all know the show's canceled. Everyone run for cover. Go into your basement. No, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, it's just a crazy stressful time. I can't help but reflexively joke at everything. That's fun. At least stress. So we all know what's been going on in this country. We all know what's been going on politically, economically, biologically regarding a pandemic. Um, yeah. How should we begin? How would you like to introduce yourself and, and introduce this topic oh, we're talking about? Yeah. Well, uh, hi, I'm John. Uh, <laughs> I've, uh, God, I don't even know where to begin. I uh, worked, uh, I'm doing a, what we call HVT protection during these riots. Um, I have a regular full time job. I work for the state working with uh, special people. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, I have five years in, in the Army, and majority of my background has been doing, uh, working with law enforcement and um, I don't want to say apprehension, but catching special people that, that you know, and, uh, and so I, by special, I, I, can you, can you, can you clarify at all what you mean by special? Yeah. People that are not doing good things to other people. So particularly yeah. wanted. So like, infamous. If, if you, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's kind of like the cloudy side of me. The other side of me, I do, I do a lot of, which is kind of fucking funny. I do a lot of social media, so I'm, I have an alter ego. His name is Grounded. And I do videos regarding airsoft and tactical scenarios and, and tactical shooting and whatnot. Um, and real compartmentalization, mainly, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly right. Yeah, man. Wow. And, uh, and that's mainly what I do. I own a website uh, called airsoftpacific.com. Um, it's a buy, sell, trade, and also a news website for airsoft and mail some junkies and i also have a regular broadcast tv show um on comcast channel 20 dollar uh, channel 22 23 and 24 here in salem oregon that display throughout the area regarding uh the willamette valley and places to go so for i go from one extreme to another <laughs> and i'm also a editor and producer for a quilting show <laughs> Here in Salem. Get out of town. Quilting? <laughs> yeah, You're quilting. In, was it Salem, uh, Massachusetts? No, Salem, Oregon. Salem, Oregon. Okay. Oregon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a local quilt store. They put out shows and whatnot, and I'm the producer and camera guy, and I do things. A so I like to... quilts. What's that? Wow. A show on quilts. Yeah, literally, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wild. Quilting, you, are, yeah. you are a well-rounded individual. <laughs> I knew he would be a good guest on the show. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, so thank yeah, you for coming I, on. <laughs> That's cool stuff, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, so I, uh, in the intro of the show, I always say we're a show about uh, poverty, basic income, and electoral politics. Um, and so all that stuff is going on reflected in the civil unrest that we've all been experiencing. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, does anyone have any questions for our guests today to start the, uh, the conversation? Oh, I am the guest. Uh, I forgot I was going to ask somebody a question. You're a special guest. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to cut you off if you had more to uh, to say, too, about you. I just wanted to, like, as, 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 as interesting as the quilting is. No, no, that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was quilting. No, that was it so far yeah. until I come up with my next adventure. Um, well, my question would be, um, could you uh, paint a picture of what your experience is like um, in relation to uh, helping media uh, during a time like this, I would love to hear oh, more on that. Yeah, so 
Um, I'm detached to uh, a reporter for our, a high-ranking news network that is not favored. Um, in fact, they're, they can be seen as extreme right-wing uh, network, and they don't, you know, the colored and the minority don't like this network primarily. Um, so they're here. However, they're a local network, but people can't seem to determine the difference. But they still broadcast over to large networks like CNN, CBS, um, and ABC. So my job is to keep them safe and basically not get for them not to get the shit kicked out of. Because if if, if you guys have seen, they've also targeted reporters, not only from the crowd and the protesters, but also from law enforcement. Um, at times we're negotiators because even though they want to beat the shit out of these reporters, these reporters are trying to send out their voice or have their voices be heard. And they, they seem not to get that. So it kind of like defeats the purpose of the whole protest thing because the people they're trying to give you your voice, you're beating their ass. So our job is we go undercover. <laughs> um, I'm armed. I have a, uh, you know, I have two pieces of sidearm with me. I have a pistol and, a rifle tucked in in my backpack. Um, and uh, as far as non-lethal means, I have a taser, a baton, and two types of pepper spray on me. So in case they want to get froggy, we have to, you know, protect what we call our HBT, our high valuable uh, target. Um, they were three crews that they had out. Um, sometimes there's one officer per two reporters, or it's usually a team. It's a camera guy and the reporter. So last night, it was uh, two on two. So it was me and another guy, plus the camera guy and the uh, reporter. Some of my friends said that they saw me in the camera <laughs> on accident because I was trying to shove this guy away. And if you watch one of the local news here, Faye, I'll send you the picture so you can see and fucking make fun of me, that they saw me. I look like the fucking Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did see a comment that someone saw you on the news channel, but I didn't <laughs> see the thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's basically the extent of our detail. Tonight is my last night as I have to return back to my regular working job uh, tomorrow. And tonight, I'm not going back, well, quite frankly, because I have a birthday party. My birthday was a couple of days ago, so they're celebrating it because I spent it over at the protest. Happy belated birthday, but I said it hey, on <laughs> Thank you. 40 feels a fucking amazing. <laughs> wow. Big one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what kind of experiences, um, like, uh, you said you uh, kind of are the negotiator. What does that look like? W like, Well, like, for example, like, let's say somebody, this happens a lot. The broadcaster is broadcasting, and they might see the side of the camera and might say the network's name and somebody in the crowd would say, Hey, they're with, they're with ABC network, which is not it, but I'm just saying that about they're with this network. And I'd be like, yo, 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 chill, chill. What the fuck are you doing, man? They're trying to set out your voice. They're, tr they're trying to let you be heard. And you can see the report from the corner of their eye. You can see that they're like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Because this is like a mob mentality times 10. One person yells one thing, 20 other people are going to perk up kind of like fucking prairie dogs and like come towards us. And so my job was to just talk to these people and be like, yo, man, they're trying to say your voice. Well, well, let me talk to that bitch. Let me talk to her. And then we would we would be forced to have an interview with them and whatever crazy theory that they have, we would have to record it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go on the air but we would have to record it just so they can see that we're not there with the police because that's the theory that the 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 group has that we're the police and we're narking and we're snitching which yeah, is yeah. not even the case understandable uh, at a glance you know in a very tense situation <laughs> if you sort of almost look the part right i mean yeah. they don't they don't know people don't know people see someone yeah. who's armed kind of strong clean cut sort of military stance all the kind of indicators of like a you know yeah. military, like yeah. a combat trained background and well, and and they go cop cuz it's most likely so it's under yeah. understandable yeah one dead giveaway for us was that one the car that these guys came in doesn't have their station id everybody else does uh kgw abc all those guys and on their flag mics, they don't have a flag mic. And on the camera itself, 
on the side panel, they taped it over, but their little barcode says the actual network name if people stand close enough, and that's how they recognize us. Some, not all of them. Uh, people so, aren't going to necessarily even expect or just imagine that that there is going to be private security with reporters, or, or you know, people don't necessarily know you exist or you're there. So no, exactly. They're, they're going to think cop. That's yeah. So exactly. Yeah, that's going to happen think, all the time. It it does, and it's worked to my advantage. The fact that based on the training that I have, I'm able to really fast build a rapport with the individual and kind of gain compliance as to I'm on their side, even though I, all I'm trying to do is trying to fucking survive. <laughs> but I, I yeah, get, man, I I get compliance from them, and it's worked out well for like I don't know the past. 10 fucking years that I've been doing it. I haven't gotten my shit beat in, so knock on wood, it'll continue to be that way. I mean, a lot, a lot is said by your word choice by saying, you know, I gain compliance. <laughs> it tells about your your paradigm and your training. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> diff- you know, it's different from what we typically have had on here. However, and this is going to be totally radical, however, this, this event is a long time coming. I... I'm kind of glad that it's happening because it opens their eyes, which Mm -hmm. is interesting because we were standing at the picketing line right in front behind the fence. And this cop was like, just approached me out of the blue. And he's like, Hey man, who are you with? Are you with Blackwater? Are you, are you, are you, are you you tier one? That's so funny. And within the community, you know, have you ever heard of tier one operator? I, I don't know what that is. No, I'm not part of that at all. You have to explain. Which I'm totally oblivious to this world. So tier one operator are these guys that are like 15 year special forces and they do like covert operations. And these are the motherfuckers where they make video games out of. And he was asking me, well, he, are you like tier one? I was like, no, 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 dude. I'm just private. Like Rainbow um, Six kind of. Exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. Exactly. <laughs> he thought I was like, it, don't get me wrong. You see how much people assume was, if you just if fucking look the part. Because yeah, people are I mean, like, you you look like a cop, but not quite. Maybe a little ex- more, right? Yeah, I was, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit scruffy. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm not like Gucci six pack, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty fit, dude. And I have, I look, you know, I look the part. So anyways, this guy was like, hey, man, this sucks. I was like, I know, bro. And I keep nodding my head because I can't really show that I'm having a conversation because I got, I don't know, a million fucking lunatics behind me. So I keep nodding my head and be like, bro, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, bro. This sucks. And just when I said that, somebody threw a fucking bottle over. This was last night, like around one o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and he's like, dude, we didn't <laughs> even know. This is like, we're not even trained. We don't believe in what they did back east and they're doing this shit. And I was like, I know, dude. I'm so sorry. And I have to be stoic and not say anything. And then the reporter, <laughs> the camera guy, was starting to record and having this little, like, nonchalant, undercover, weird dialogue. And I was like, don't you fucking record me, dude. I can't. Don't. Please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do it. I know this is going to get you ratings. But if you do, I swear to God, I have your phone number. I know where you live. Oh, I'm going to come murder you. <laughs> so, so since you're on the other end of the aisle, I have a question. Um, yeah. Like, you know, some of you police officers are kneeling with the crowd and stuff like that. Do you think this is something that, uh, like, I don't know, Portland police would do? Or do you think it's something that even you yourself would participate in if asked? Or, you like, what would kneeling? You... Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably would. Um, the problem with that is that. It, and this is working. This is if I was on the job, I cannot kneel. It, it no if ends buts about it. I cannot kneel if I'm working. I can't because that gives my tactical advantage away. I have to be standing the whole time. Which is funny you bring that up because at Pioneer Square, when everybody was sitting down, I was standing up. I can't. I just can't kneel because I have to be able to react quickly and. And Mm -hmm. if I was to sit down or if I was to kneel, it would just delay my response time. And unfortunately, I can't. So I had a lot of people pissed off at me because of that. I was like, I'm working. I can't I can't do it. And I couldn't shine my badge because I would have got my shit kicked out in and I didn't want to fucking, you know, react. So if I was off the clock, oh, fuck, yeah, absolutely. It's needed, which is kind of funny because now cops decided to kneel after Kaepernick was doing it years ago. And now it's like okay which is kind of uh funny which 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 is interesting why this whole thing is happening because i'm personally i'm kind of glad it's going it hopefully i'm hoping law enforcement the 
and when I mean law enforcement, I'm referring to the good old boys club yeah. sees this shit that they need to change their ways. It's 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 an archaic system that hasn't changed in years, and it needs to stop. It needs to change. We're having, and this is from a friend, inside info, Oregon State Police is going to go revert backwards to the way it was before. We have this current superintendent, uh, which it's public. His name is Travis Hampton. Everybody knows that. And he is trying to unify people, but his replacement, a female, I don't know her fucking name, she wants to go back and revert the way it was before. Uh, Travis has this thing where if a trooper pulls you over for a broken headlight or a, a missing headlight or whatever, the trooper gives you a voucher for AutoZone for like 20, 30 bucks to get a replacement. She's trying to take that out. And is this just an Oregon thing? Like I've never. No, heard... yeah, yeah, no, this is this, at least for us, this is just an Oregon thing just for us. That's kind of beautiful that they have that in place. What is the reasoning for getting rid of it though? It's the uh, the reciprocity of individuals going to court. So we're starting to, or not, when I say we, I mean they, let me rephrase that. What they started to notice is that the amount of citations were indigent, uh, indiv- indigent individuals. So the individuals that have broken headlights was because they can't afford it. Okay, if you can't afford it, we give you a citation. That's just going to make the hole even deeper. And there mm-hmm. might be chances that you're going to miss said court date because you're making up you know, work hours. Well, that means you're going to have a bench warrant because you failed to appear. Well, you get that bench warrant. Once we find you, we're going to take you to jail. And it's just going to make this whole cascade of just clusterfuck for over a fucking $5 light bulb. So Travis idea was let's help them. Let's not have these people get a citation, go to court, miss it, have a bench warrant, go to jail, and then just fuck up your life. And now you have a record because of a broken light bulb. And and, so, and then if they couldn't afford the light, then um then then they're driving to court, and then they get another citation for not having the light too. And it's, yeah, and that's and that's happened before. Yeah, uh, so that's that's what he put into place, and you know it's worked phenomenal. And it's not, and I haven't had or I haven't heard cases where people are abusing it because it's like not a common thing. People like to have their shit squared away, so it's not it it's never been of use, and I think it's been on. This program has been in effect since Travis been around, which is like I think five years. Um, he's retiring this year. He's 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 done with the agency, so the the replacement is kind of like not wanting to do the same thing. You know, she's a local homegrown girl, so she's not experienced life outside of the valley and only been around her kind of people. So she doesn't know about much about diversity and whatnot. So. It's going to be interesting how state po- Oregon State Police is going to proceed. Uh, as far as the other agencies like Portland, I <laughs> Portland is interesting because they're, to me, they're so fearful of doing anything in the media that they downplay a lot, a lot of things. So um, Portland what has just been mean? a whole different. Well, meaning that, for example, uh, when I was working TriMet, the, in TriMet is the Transit Authority in Portland. Uh, we would rely on them to come pick individuals up and take them to jail or for assist. We've got to the point that they didn't even were running warrants for individuals. Uh, that was the issue we had before, which, in fact, it went to the state court where people didn't want law enforcement and trains checking for warrants um, because they, they said it was unconstitutional and whatnot. So they're no longer allowed in trains. And if they are, they're part of the fair inspection team they're not allowed to be there like on their own so uh we have an issue now where they're no longer running warrants. they're not taking people in for jails they just kind of like cite and release type shit and then hope that they go you know they show up to court um and that's because of corona right yeah it's partly of corona and partly because of the people not liking police (laughs) that's two of the major things so a couple of months ago uh, we had an individual that fatally stabbed a couple of people. Well, this person had uh, open warrants. If we were able to intervene because we made contact with this person beforehand, uh, we were able to pull that person and take him to jail. But because the cops wasn't able to get in, uh, they just kind of they, when they made contact with him, they kind of just let him go and they didn't run for ID or warrants or anything. They just kind of like nonchalant talked to him and said. You know, is there is, is basically every conversation with 
with TriMet Police goes, is there anything we can do for you to stop, you know, your actions or whatever? And we would just try to comply and remove him off the train and not run for warrants. So anyways, this guy goes off. I think he stabbed two people and he like killed them. And now he's in, uh, he's going to prison now, which is very, very, very unfortunate. Um, so yeah, so Portland police is really afraid of doing anything right now. They're kind of like hands off. And in fact, yesterday during the protest, we were kind of noticing, you know, it's like 4 PM and we haven't seen not one fucking cop. Not one. And then hmm. they started appearing like around 8 p.m. towards the nighttime. And even then, they were kind of like, uh, this is the police. This is a peaceful riot. Please don't throw things at us. And this happened for a couple of times. I'll send you, actually, it's in the group here. I'll send you the video, as a matter of fact, uh, of them saying, please, this is the police. Don't, don't throw things at us. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. And people will be like, fuck you. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm standing here and I'm like, this is not the way. These these guys are not your enemies. And they kept chanting, defunct the police, defunct the police. Would you realize how much fucking chaos that's going to be? They're literally arguing with themselves. Like, I, I heard a couple arguing about <laughs> a guy not wearing his mask right and the girl getting on his ass yeah. about it. I'm like, you guys are arguing amongst yourself and yet you want the cops to be disbanded? Like, you have to be... What would you like to see as a, um, like, solution to this? I would like to see more brown people, more blacks on law enforcement. Because the line that they were holding up, the cops that were there, they were all white. Sure, there was a nation there. Sure, there was a female there. There might have been a gay. I don't fucking know. But they were all white people. There wasn't much of color. So we, as, and I mean we as in, like, our melanin, uh, (laughs) <laughs> Millen and rich people, we need to step up and be in these positions because that's that's the only way that change can happen, man. It's from the inside. It's 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 part of any revolutionary tactic from the fucking seventies. The Black Panthers did it. They they got people on the inside and changed ways. Sure, protesting will get your voice heard. Sure, but that's not how change happened, man. It's from the inside, and you know, rank up these positions. Uh, well, with I'm, everything going on, like, like it's almost discouraging people necessarily because they're they're like, I don't want to be part of the police because they're like, yes, and then absolutely. then you gotta infiltrate. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. Like the Yang Gang Roundtable podcast has been very good about uh, trying to infiltrate politics. Okay, like that's kind of what we we're finding the people and trying to help them get into politics and go on the inside, right? So what kind of equivalent, like, how could you encourage people to sign up? Like, what what barriers do you think people uh, face when trying to do stuff like this? Their backgrounds, most of them have felonies, plain and simple. That's the main discouraging part. One is felonies, and number two, people are smoking weed. And when you go out for any police review or any government job, depending on a position, you have you cannot have inhaled or consume uh, um, drugs within the last twelve months. And people have ever since we became legal in Oregon, they've been doing it every fucking day. So it's gonna that's gonna be a a problem. And the sad part is it's affecting the minorities because that's that's it. It just does. I, I don't know any other way to describe it 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 affects us because we're the ones mostly inhaling not inhaling but consuming the shit because it's our means for us to escape because yeah we are oppressed i i totally get it but god damn it do something about it rather than smoking pot going to a fucking protest and throw shit at cops there's just no way to do it so well, i mean people have tried voting and it turns out that doesn't seem to work either you know so people are understandably frustrated and understandably protesting you like you said like uh, you know it's something needed to happen right um, yep, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that the protest <clears throat> somehow does work. But out of out of the crowd of people, I just hope that at least one person needs to realize you have to get on the inside. That's the only way you can make a change. The only fucking way. I mean, hell, we've allowed a goddamn Cheeto to be our president. And within a matter of 72 hours, this cocksucker fucking changing rules regarding Twitter and verifying and fact-checking this shit just because he got pissed off and he put, like, 
a presidential order within 72 hours. This motherfucker has the power to do good shit, but yet he does it over dumb shit. So imagine if we had somebody of color, which we did, and he did amazing job. I wish we could have another one. Instead, we got the human Cheeto. Uh, I, it just appalls me that they they just don't realize we need we need basically we need people on the inside. Apply for law enforcement jobs. Uh, apply for civil service. Something to get your voice heard. Um, but you know they just so so if the the barrier is felonies though. And I mean, some people are like, oh, I don't want someone as a felon to be a, a police officer. You know, like uh, what kind of crimes should be disregarded uh, if like what what needs to drop off in order for these people to um, effectively, optimally and, you know, uh, hopefully peacefully enter uh, this kind of job market? I say possession. Any crimes involving marijuana and possession uh, should not be a felony in fact you shouldn't even go to jail for it now if you're if you have like large amounts where it's where it's an intent to distribute yeah sure but personal consumption nah dude you shouldn't you shouldn't take somebody to jail violent crimes i would definitely put that as a disqualifier and individuals with uh felons in possession of firearms um you don't want that for civil service but personal drug crimes nah uh Now, methamphetamine, I would disqualify, definitely. So there are a couple of things they can do to loosen the requirements. Even just personal use of that. Even personal use, yeah. They can let that go. And you can you can tell by the individual. You you can see if they're, you know, if they're all about changing their lives or they're not. And uh it it yeah, that's that's where I stand on that. Um they have loosened it a little bit. In fact, Portland Police Bureau is in such a need for officers that they're willing to pay your what they call NTN National Testing Network your testing fees and willing to fast track you to become an officer and the pay is great you know they always have overtime the pay is really good um, and you have a bunch of things options you can do from liaison to bike patrol to air support to you know corrections or whatever um, they just um, and- hi. I just wanted to say hi, because um, I'd like to try to jump in in the conversation. Sorry to get here late. Okay, Um, what's up? uh, Is your name John? Yeah, hi. I'm Faye. I'm the second Faye here. The other Faye (laughs) (laughs) invited you. There's there's two of you. Yes, there's two of us. This is Faye Coon, and the other is Faye Doni. Yeah, I may be uh, one of those uh, felons that she uh, she was mentioning. Uh, I actually tried to run for... the sweetest felon you'll ever meet. (laughs) <laughs> I'm probably the most law-abiding felon you'll ever meet. <laughs> um, Beautiful. But, so I, I was uh, wanting to jump in when I heard uh, that conversation happen. And uh, the reason is um, I feel like there are there is something about... Um, okay, so the law treats the fact that you can escape the law as being um, just on a par with like any type of violence that you could do. Right. So one of the things that happened in my felony was... I escaped the country and therefore escaped the jurisdiction of the law. And right. uh, when I came back, when I was brought back, of course, they didn't want that to happen again. So they was like, you know, <laughs> uh, they kept me in for pretrial for almost uh, nine months before I was uh, given my sentence. And was so, it a state charge or federal? It was a federal charge because I left the country. So it has uh, to be a federal charge for them to come after you in a, at an international level. Yeah. So... So anyway, the question here is really that um, I feel that when you when you say that the government should now try to bring people back in because we have so many felons in our country now, you know, yeah. and to to prevent all of them from working ever again, <laughs> or to prevent them from for many of them from joining, uh, you know, certain types of professions like law enforcement things like that, where they would have a definite stake. In, in trying to get their their viewpoint, you know, to the into the those particular professions, um, I think it's going to require a different, like a whole different perspective of what crime really is. Um, yep. I don't know. Uh, maybe we need to work more on, um, like, the core of uh, criminality is that you disagree with the law, and so that's what we're really dealing with. Is that there are people who feel that they can violate the law because they. There's disrespect for the law in general, right? Yes. But there also, is. but there's uh, legitimate disrespect where you just, where you're like a freedom fighter, 
right? And you're trying to um, you're trying to escape uh, in, in just unjust laws, like you're saying for possession. There's a lot of people who feel that it's just unjust, or for uh-huh. uh, like those traffic tickets that you know the five dollar traffic ticket that then becomes a, a, a you know something that runs over your life for the rest of your life. Um, so there's a lot of different. Uh, so I don't know how we can we classify things based on whether there was an injustice that was came from the from the law itself. Right. I I don't know. I wish there was a way. I wish there was. <laughs> I wish there was a judge that would be open to the idea. That it would be like, okay, well, let's look at why this happened. Okay, if she did this because of this, it wasn't really because it was intent, and that's actually what they need to truly see is. What was the intent of the individual? And I don't think they're doing that. They just see it as, oh, okay, she did this, therefore she hates the law, and we're going to go after her and charge her, and that's the end of the story. Lock her ass up. So what that's- would the measurements, uh, what, like, what kind of criteria do they need to look at when it comes to intent then? Um, well, that's tough that to say. I, I have very limited exper- experiments, experience on this side because um, I'll – are you on the Discord group? Uh, um, yeah. Or she is? Because I, uh, I'm i going to post something real quick that's going to kind of shock all you guys. Social. Put it in the social. Yes, okay. we're all here on the Discord together. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see that there? Uh, wh- which chat did you put it in? You put oh. it in the live stream chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's not being live streamed today. We just have an image up today, but we have the audio going. Okay. okay. Oh, these are There's some really great videos up there. I, I haven't checked out. Thanks. So... With that very last comment that I did, I I can understand what what you're saying, or at least I'm hoping so. Uh, that's that's why I am in the position that I'm trying to be in to make changes. So as far as trying to change it and what identifying intent, I don't know. That's where I'm at. I'm trying to change that because not not everybody with a felony is a bad person. It's just. We made a stupid decision years ago, and we're we did our time and did our thing, and you know move on. So, but there's also sort of the political prisoner, and some people are um, are allowed to be political prisoners, and some people are not. Yeah. So, like some political prisoners come out after twenty seven years in prison and then become the father of his nation, <laughs> right? That's that's Nelson Mandela's story right there. Right. But some people, um, you know, will never be allowed to take on that mantle because, you know, if you're female, for example, and you're fighting for just your family, um, where most most women's legal problems stem from family courts, right? Yes. Uh, where there's absolutely no standard for evidence or standard for certain, you know, the way criminal courts would have. That's my six-year-old. Um, so, so that's where, like, uh, like you can't even be labeled a. Uh, an activist for human rights if you're just fighting a family divorce court type of situation. ACLU will not touch it with a 10-foot pole, you know, and neither will most civil rights people because that's what? cast as just, it's a dispute between just you and a, and one one man. They, they don't see it as being um, a civil rights issue, even though that's where most women fight their battles, you know. Wow. I had no idea. So anyway, what the, I think, what I see is that there are some people who violate the law in because there's a um, there's an injustice that they maybe other people would disagree that it's an injustice, but they're doing it because of you know civil rights protesting, for example. The people yeah. are being arrested. Are they being arrested for looting, or are they there protesting peacefully and trying to um, you know further a cause? So there's there's a, a definite. Um, that's where I think there needs to be a line, but it's hard to tell who should, you know, is there some way of classifying people after the fact even? Well, we also need to consider lawyers, right? Uh, into this equation. Um, I didn't even think about that until just now, apparently. Uh, but like, uh, lawyers are hard to afford when you're low income anyway. Right. Um, but like lawyers can also set the president, for what is tolerable and not, right? Like uh, you have a case and you can finally bring a platform to an issue if you have, you know, a lawyer willing to try and do that and you can change laws. But I mean, realistically, like it's hard to trust lawyers today too. There's so many jobs out there that are uh, exploiting other people. You know, you could have a contract job for fixing a roof 
and the supplies and the labor costs is, you know, a tiny percentage of what that person's like putting in their pocket for just finding the contract, you know? So I don't know. There's so many injustices. Um, well, in, well, re in regards to um, the people who are uh, doing these different um, activities right now in politics, right? And then uh, they may be coming into that situation of violating a law and then being basically disabled by that, you know, if they get a case and then that becomes a record for them, so on and so forth. Um, that's a that's a significant uh, prohibitor to to people participating in things that you know that sound that are called a protest. So um, I wonder if there's some way to um, like a make a general am amnesty or something like that after they've. I don't know, or, or like expunge the record or something, you know, after a certain amount of time. I wish. Um, the only way to do it is by the individual going and uh, what they call, at least for an our state, it's called set aside or yeah, or, or an expungement, um, especially for, I don't know what the process is for federal felonies. I know for state and local for misdemeanors, but I'm not sure for federal. Um, for federal, you would have to uh, get a presidential pardon. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not asking specifically for just my case. It would be for, you know, people in general. I don't think most people are being charged with a felony right now. 200 protesters were arrested in Houston, um, and I don't know what for, you know. Some of them may be charged with looting or something else or yeah. public disturbance. I don't know. Maybe if we do manage to get Andrew Yang into the White House, he could look at exonerating more crimes more victimless crimes, crimes where the victim is the person who is wrongfully incarcerated uh, yes. than, than just drug crimes, than just marijuana crimes. You know, you, like you, you, you said, uh, you said, you know, I think it's okay uh, if people use marijuana and they want to become cops, but not if they use meth. And I was going to kind of question you on that because you're like, because I'm like, you know, personal use, you defended cannabis as, as, a, as a way to escape. Fine, fine, good. Or, you know, perhaps a performance. I don't know. I don't think you said performance enhancer, but I think some people do use it that way, you know. Um, it depends who you are. Um, yeah, I would pause it, and maybe this is a little outside the Overton. Some people can handle their meth. <laughs> Honestly, I think I think there are probably some people who use a little meth now and then who aren't bad people at all. Uh, I mean, drugs are scapegoated. There's really nothing inherently bad about drugs. They're a tool, right? It's a chemical tool. It can be good or bad. It's about how you use it. And I honestly would not automatically discount people who had had used meth even. But I mean, because I, I personally don't think that you know. I, I think all our drug laws are. Draconian and I mean, we have Adderall, right? Well, well, yes, Adderall, it's, it's, it's so similar to Adderall, really. I mean, it's 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 very similar, yeah. And that's oh, the prescription no. drug people take all the time. They are they are chemically similar, but the psychological effects that they have are very different. Um, methamphetamine actually has a lot more um, potential for psychological damage, and there are many uh, meth addicts that become uh, very hyper aggressive and they also lose uh, their ability to produce dopamine because it also chemically mirrors uh, dopamine. So they lose the ability to produce uh, their own dopamine, leading to uh, severe depression, which leads to other psychological issues as well. Oh, shit, so, but I'm in trouble. Uh, well, you know, well, maybe not. Here's, here's my counter. There's, there's a lot of good, good information about a lot of really sincerely dangerous substances out there. But there's a lot of propaganda, too. And it's been going on so long and mixed together so completely that it's hard to parse the two apart. So anytime I hear a scare story like that, I go and look it up and I can find half the time it turns out to be false. So I don't know. I'll do I'll research that, see where you got that from, and we'll figure it out, you know? Uh, yeah, you can find uh, the medical to... journals for that one. I'll send them to you, Shale. I completely but agree. even if it's in the medical right. journal, even, even sources we consider credible might not be because of the perverse incentives that got us there. So I wanted to go back to something that um, John was saying um, before. He was saying that the only way to actually affect change is to work within the system. But that's actually the exact opposite of what our friend Aaron Fogg came to say, <laughs> that what we did in the system didn't matter because the entire system was so corrupt, it had to be taken down. So I thought that was something we need to maybe explore a little bit, whether it is the only way. Um, I mean, I think, I think that we all want to work within the system because we want the system to continue uh, protecting the people that it does and to continue getting insulin to people who need it and continue getting food to people who need it, you know, and not, not have the entire thing melt down. But is there enough, you know, left over in this, uh, as, as Andrew puts it, the shit muffin 
<laughs> to to actually you know save and do something with it um i think so um i was having this conversation with a friend a couple of weeks ago so i was giving the scenario and this is based on what she said uh if you have a regular work office and you have this one office female that you know she has to deal with the boys she occasionally lightly she gets uh I don't want to say lightly, but she just, she gets harassed. She has no ally. She has no voice. Nobody for her to talk to. Nobody for her to show her concerns. Let's say time goes on. You know, individuals get replaced. They get replaced by other females. Um, One female turns two, two turn to four. Now we're starting to see like a fucking office full of females, which to me is fantastic. Uh, And I think what, what, what I gather from it is that it's not just going to happen with just one person. It's going to have to be systematically people in the different pos- in the right positions being able to come together and be like, okay, dude, you have this role, you have this role, you have this role. Let's strategize, just like how you do in the protest. You strategize the times, you strategize the locations and what you do and what your message. Let's do that behind the wall and see what change we can do, whether it's healthcare whether it's, you know, being public affairs, whether it's, you know, public health, do it in numbers. And like, here, here's a prime example. Where I work, my agency, I am the only colored Latino man where I work. Everybody is white. So my ability to change is going to be very, very little. Um, unless I get, you know, two or more or three more people like me, then we could we can make a change. So, um Personally, I think, yes, the inside, if you're on the inside, you need to make it, you, you have the ability to do it. You just got to get it in them. Do you feel uh, discriminated against ever? Hell yeah, I do. Yeah. In what ways? Um, let go of uh, jobs that I've had. I've been passed over for job performance or uh, uh, what do you call it? Not races, but uh, new positions. I've been passed over. Um, and I've, and some roles I have not just been taken so seriously and they, they're extra hard on my work where I've seen my other male white counterparts where their reports are just as shit or worse. And mine are pretty spotless. And I'm questioning myself, what the fuck? I even left an employer. I was there for a month because I didn't feel I was being treated right. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, I have. There, there hasn't been any full blown instances where it was like pretty blatant and fucking obvious. It's kind of been very like passive aggressive type. It's terrible because everybody can have uh, these same experiences, but uh, not everyone gets a chance to speak out um, for themselves. No, they don't. Uh, oh, you're that Faye. Hey, I, I just saw your post. I wanted to ask you something about uh, because this is what everybody's really calling for during the protests is we want an end to police brutality, right? So one of the uh, one of the many options is maybe don't allow them to be carrying guns everywhere all the time. Maybe only have, you know, special forces be carrying the guns who are called in on a secondary basis. Right. How do you feel about doing your security work without a gun? Would uh, that be possible? I know it, it's it wouldn't be possible because I do not know what the other individual have. The way I was taught is that I either meet or exceed the level of threat that is coming towards me. So if I make contact with a person, I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not going to show all my cards. I'm going to deal it the way that he's talking to me. Now, if said subject comes out with me with a crowbar, I'm going to go non-lethal round, which is a taser, which is a baton, um, something to stop the threat. And if he, if that doesn't work, then that's when I go lethal round. However, I will say on that basis that what you just said, uh, Portland police had changed their protocols where they're not sending law enforcement officers to low level, non hostile 911 calls. They're sending, I forgot what they're called. They're like police liaison. Uh, they report to the shift commander and they drive like blue sprinter vans and they have like a radio, mace, and gloves. And that's about it. Um, and they're leaving the law, the, the armed officer to like actual issues where there's a probability that there is a, there are firearms or weapons 
Do you think those other uh, people in the bands, uh, do you think uh, what they do is effective? Uh, do you think there could be? I think so. I really do think so because it sets a note that they're that the police bureau is not in a, uh, they're not, you know, in a show of force type thing. I, I don't know how to describe it, but there's some people that get really standoff when somebody comes up to you with it, even though it's holstered and locked and your hand is not Certainly, on the weapon. Yeah. It changes There's the people. entire dynamic of a situation. If you it just, does, you know, some it people does. can't get over the fact, and it's it's understandable that this at, at any moment this person could just kill you. You know, it's just a uh, so if if you don't bring it when you don't need it, that really can sort of inherently de-escalate wherever you go. Just reduce the tension level. That's that's one of the things Andrew Yang has been tweeting about in the past forty-eight hours, suggesting there should be a number you could call for non-lethal assistance from law enforcement a a a 912 he proposed oh yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah Yeah. Um, so in that case you know the person who's making the call is actually getting more control over what they're asking for help right because you somebody has to make that 911 call to bring the emergency crew to whatever situation is going on and and uh, when they make that call they already have an assessment of what they think you know how what kind of situation is going on right so right. that person can say, I want to find somebody who's non-lethal to come because this is my neighbor or this is my son. Because uh, I've, I've seen a police call where it was a white man called the police to come and stop his son. It was in Florida. Called, to, to, called the police to stop his son from uh, doing something like taking the truck, taking his, own, taking his dad's truck to go out to go buy some cigarettes because his dad didn't want to buy it for him. All right. So they he called the police. The police came, shot his shot up the truck with six different rounds of I don't know what, and then and, and killed the man. That was his son that they called the police for. Jeez. So it gives people like a chance to call the police and say, I only want non lethal options on the table if you're gonna deal with this situation. Right. Otherwise I wouldn't call you. Yeah. And it also it helps to de escalate because when you don't have a weapon, you have to learn to um work on de-escalating a situation your people skills yeah exactly <laughs> people um, skills yeah actually, well this uh, is yeah. an interesting thing let's ask yeah. let's ask john have you received any people skills training because you said the training said you should do this maybe you need uh to be offered other types of training i'm sure your employers you know or whoever is who is training you for these things i am really sad to say this but i have to go on my own i i get my own training like my own negotiation my own uh, how to de-escalate and how to de- mainly the the push has been dealing with individuals that's going mental health crisis and it's all out of pocket. I do it on my own. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but so at least you're required. getting the training. You know what's that? But at least you're getting the training, even if you're oh, seeking yeah. it out on your own, which oh, is oh, you know fantastic yeah. to hear. Right. Yeah. It, it's but it's like could you imagine that for like the military if you had to pay out of pocket to get your own training like, so that training stupid. you put it on your resume and you say this is the training i've been receiving and when you say i want to sign up for a job you know you can present it i wonder if uh you could present yourself like if you got more martial arts training or peace negotiation training or something like that would that's that even funny. look good to an employer that's funny you say that because my current job that i have it's dealing with individual with mental health crisis and that's how i got my current state job yeah, it, it works. Yeah. So, John, I want to tell you, so when you were, you said you were in the Army previously? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, how many, like, people of color did you did you see? Or were they, like, mostly white? Oh, or did... Yeah, it was a melting pot. It was a whole bunch. Uh, I right. think it was, like, maybe 60% colored. Uh, I was uh. stationed in uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia. Oh, okay. So sixty yeah. percent colored, and there. So that's what I'm thinking because because like this is not such a cut and dry issue, where Donald Trump is just like, oh, I'm gonna call in the military. A lot of people in the military are like, hey, hang on a second. Like, I have yes. my own brain. Like, I I have I can think for myself, and I'm not. If 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 our president wants to do something stupid and unconstitutional, I I, I have a mind of my own, and I'm not just gonna follow it. You know. <laughs> uh, not only that, uh, every um, military personnel has the right to refuse an unconstitutional order. Yeah, right? and, and this guy's full of them. 
even we call this we call him Mad Dog Mathis because he's like a, the strictest Marine out there. He uh-huh. even did not agree with what Trump is doing, and now you have all these like fucking conservatives saying that Mathis is not an uh, an American. He's not he's not for the people. And it's like, no, he's just not putting up for the bullshit that Trump wants him to do. Which is- I, I just think that, like, now it's just become like a cult. Because I'm going to tell you, like, the I, I supported Trump before. Of course, now now nothing. Like, I, I can't stand it. But, but be, because he said, you know, I'm going to bring some jobs back. I know because he said we're suffering economically. And, you know, he was right. We were suffering economically. And then he just he just said, I'm going to I'm going to help with that. But but then little by little, I saw that like he was just turning his brand into a cult. And I'm like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I voted for you for. I thought you were the business guy who was going to create like opportunities and uh, help people get more money in their pockets. But this is just a load of crap. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so 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 he's 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 a lot of people who are like reasonable for him really just started to peel off, and now it's just like those staunch ones. But like now, when you have like the 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 toughest guy in the military calling you like a petulant child, I mean, I don't know where we go from there. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, if you think about the big picture. It's still it's so disturbing because. If they peel away from Trump, but, who do we get? But, shoot but him I, in the leg, Joe Biden, I, right? We get I, shoot him in the leg, Biden. That's right, a big. Well, that's a big improvement. Come on, what? There, there are no options for Americans. Yeah, there isn't. But I think John, you said you no, but you said it best. Look, look at what we're doing here. Like we're creating our own media. Like how John said, you have to infiltrate the police. We have to infiltrate, you know, the news. By creating our own, by like, you know, doing something like this. And, and, and John, you're also, you know, part making your media. So like I said, we need like three prongs, trickle up economics, trickle up media and trickle up politics. If we can master those three things, we can change this country for for the better, you know? Oh my God. That's actually a good idea. I like that. So some of the generals are putting out letters, um, now that uh, seem to be differentiating their positions from Trump and, uh, you know, like basically giving a warning that we have moral, you know, we have moral ground that we plan to stand on. So don't be calling us to be doing those things. That's really good. Even Pat Robertson, some people call him a white supremacist. He had the idea of assassinating uh, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. And he said that on air. But then when Trump said that he called the other governors jerks, Pat Robertson said, you just can't do that, Mr. President. It's not cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. What does it mean if Pat Robertson is rattled? That's, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, when you go that far to get someone like Pat Robertson to call you not cool. It's a strange and project like a from him. Televangelist yeah. guy with like the 700 Club and he said some homophobic things. I mean, that's, I don't know. I like how he can't exactly summarize what he doesn't like about it. It's not cool. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So there's a really good, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, there was a really good uh, Twitter Twitter um, like there's a tweet from a, at Glider Drew at G L I D E R D R E W since we're not on the live stream you know uh, with a video uh, that way you can find those letters that U S military leaders from the Air Force and from all the different military commands it's really cool. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think it's just kind of like a nice thing. I don't, I don't know how to feel of like seeing these National Guards in my city, but I'm just kind of thinking like, why don't I just like walk up to one of them and just have like a conversation? Yo, like, like, where were you stationed before? Like, like just just like as a friend, you know, because, they're because, open. They're yeah? open about it. Yeah, they're well, they yeah. open. Because because you know what, like, like Beverly Hills was kind of boring anyway, and there are all these like shops and stores that spell expensive, sell expensive shit that I don't really care about. So I just go over there and be like, yo, like, what's up? Can like, can you show me the inside of your Humvee? Hey, what are these buttons? <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just, just to have, you know, just to have a good time. <laughs> so, yeah. it, 
what I'm hearing from you is more like we need to demystify the other side, right? Like become a yes. same team and not these opposite teams. But like, hey, yeah. you yeah. need to at least share your perspective with me. Oh, that would be wonderful. Like just just to like go into like some military installation or some shit like that. Just to like just out of curiosity. Whatever happens to curiosity? Like, hey, like I want to know more about you. Like, we don't have to, like, raise raise our fists at each other and throw shit at each other. Let's just, like, know more about each other. I mean, is that really that complicated? Like, seriously. Oh, you know what? Um, Because I've been attending this uh, Texas Democratic Convention right now, well, exactly this this problem is happening, is the older people feel like we're not really doing any work unless we're working, right? And so there's all these working committees doing work, and then there's... um, these uh, convention, like uh, all the caucuses and stuff like that, the more well run they are, the less input we're getting from the people who attend. And there's less uh, opportunity during this virtual convention time to actually like network and things like that. Cause that's what you go to the convention for is for the every, you know, all those people yeah. coming from all over Texas, right? Isn't and that so by we, right. But I the, mean, the it, new yeah. design. For this virtual convention, they're so afraid of, you know, somebody Zoom bombing or something or not not using the time wisely that they are scheduling all speakers, right? And so people who attend are not meeting each other. They don't have, they don't convert to a hangout at the end of it, like, you know, where people can socialize. So I want to say that, like, these, so that uh, creating social gatherings for people who, who are trying to work on projects um, and developing the trust between them is super important and should be considered like an important, like a, the basis of all activism to, to yeah. develop trust. Faye, could that, you that, invite that, some that other exactly. people from the convention to come on our show maybe this weekend? Maybe, maybe like... I would love to once Saturday, it's over. Maybe yeah, like, okay, maybe so we can talk about Sunday. that. Yeah, yeah you, know, you know what would be really wonderful to come out of all of this like freaking chaos? Just this development of trust. Just like the protesters like getting to know the National Guard and the National Guard getting to know the protesters and just like having like chats and shooting the shit. And then Trump is like, okay, get them. And then they're like, well, they're our friends and they're pretty cool. Yeah, he, and then it's like, what? Divide and conquer, then it, he doesn't have right, much. If, if we can just like smack, like this is what we're doing. Like, John, we're your former military, now private security. We're having like a friendly chat and getting to know each other. If we could do that on a national scale, why I think we? like, why shouldn't you we? know? Yeah, I mean, like, awesome. until very recently in American history, there was hey. not this kind of cultural tension where it would be like, oh, you shouldn't have, like, a military kind of guy on a, on <laughs> there a we go. kind of show. It's like, that didn't even exist. You know? Yeah, and, and then people are happier. People can joke together and, like, say things and, like, and, and then and then there will be no, no, and then, and then there's, like, no more violence. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. not being a strict identitarian. It's just not yeah. strictly associating yeah. with people with whom you already completely agree. What is the point, you know? Right. I, I think the opportunity for networking right now during this protest is happening, right? But right. I, I don't know if people are actually optimizing this opportunity right now. And and the other thing is, like, since there is this division between, you know, uh, police officers versus not police officers, you know, it, it, it creates this, like, missed opportunity in some ways. Like, hey, why, why are you not? Oh, okay. So I was looking up um, exercises to do uh, for like icebreakers or to recognize white privilege. Okay. Um, and so it's like, you know, step forward if you went to college, you know, and most white people go forward, you know, and like other color uh, nationalities don't move forward. And then, and then like uh, you, you have the distance between them, right? And, and so then they turn around and see how much distance and how much more uh, benefits they got out of it, right? Um, and then there's another one that's like, uh, you know, here's all these boxes, okay, well, why don't you join in on this um, photograph uh, uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you're in love, right, and then that's a picture. And then, uh, you know, if you're lonely, uh, comes and, and so, like, everyone participates and they all come together for what they identify with. They've been to jail, you know, and then, and so you can see the difference is there and it's a shared experience right and so then you have this really powerful tool uh to make people think about like where they are in their lives and maybe it's something they're fearful that they're being judged for right 
Um, but uh, I think it's a great thing to practice at protest with officers. I mean, I, I don't know how easy that is to pull off, though. Now, we're not having... Uh, well, I mean, you know, look, look, what, what, what do they tell you in, like, um, second and third grade when you want to hit another kid? They say you use your words. We so as you can probably tell, Craig was having some problems at this point, and he just dropped out completely right where that audio clip ends. Let it play to the very end. I'm terribly sorry, but we lost the last 40 minutes of the conversation. Um, so big apologies to John. Uh, I hope we can have you on again sometime soon. The backup also failed. The Twitch audio um, was just too low to use in in the podcast. So I'm just going to have to end it abruptly there. Sorry about that, but I hope you got something out of this episode. Um, I hope you're staying safe out there. We have Rokana on tomorrow, so that's incredible. All right. Hopefully I will see you then. Stay safe. Stay safe.